So, you're having trouble sleeping and or you feel tired after a supposed night's rest, and you'd like to find an easy aid to help you have better sleep. Have no fear, Nicholas is here, and solutions are near. Okay, enough rhyming. No, we're not talking about melatonin. We're discussing another supplement, or amino acid, that is believed to improve sleep. Any guesses on what this amino acid could be? We'll get to that as I analyze most of the studies on its effects on sleep to date. I'll walk you through the results, including some uh, counterintuitive ones, but I'd like to take you into your brain for a minute because the mechanism by which this amino acid works is really fascinating. This amino acid acts as a neurotransmitter inside your brain, which are molecules that allow for the communication between neurons. Those are brain cells. For example, glutamate is a neurotransmitter that excites or activates neurons. It binds to a class of receptors called NMDA receptors, which leads to a change in the ion concentration. Think like sodium, potassium, calcium, which changes something called the membrane potential of the cell, essentially becomes more positive from a negative state. Also important, the concentration of calcium, a positive ion, increases. Ultimately, this shift in the balance of these ions and the membrane potential activates the neuron, like promoting sleep. We'll come back to that because it's a unique way that it does that. Anyway, I didn't pick glutamate NMDA receptors by coincidence. This mysterious amino acid that I'll reveal to you shortly binds to these very same receptors and opens the associated ion channels as well. So it activates these effects independent of glutamate. Now, why that matters is because when you go to sleep, your body has to lower its temperature and it continues to lower your body temperature until it's time to wake up when it raises your temperature. How do we change body temperature? We vasodilate, meaning our blood vessels open, which means more blood flow, which also means more heated blood comes to the surface and we expel heat from the surface blood vessels. How does that, well, tie in? Well, NMDA receptors, when they activate the neurons of the nervous system, including the brain and spinal cord, they can directly activate the blood vessels to relax, thereby vasodilating. So the amino acid binds, activates the receptor, which activates the cell, and the cell then translates that activation to the blood vessel cells, like the smooth muscle cells, and activates them to relax, allowing more blood flow. Pretty sweet, isn't it? Okay, so I've held the name from you long enough, and I'm sure someone's already accused me of wasting their time. The answer is... Glycine. The amino acid in question is glycine, and the information on the mechanisms came from this mini scientific review. Okay, I think that we can agree the mechanism is cool, but as usual, what does the human data actually show? Does it actually help? Look, I didn't entice you to click on this video just to tell you that it doesn't work, so I'll go ahead and assure you that it does, but there's some nuances there, because some of the results are a little disappointing and others are more encouraging, so let's get into it. I'll go ahead and mention that all the studies were placebo-controlled randomized trials. The design was solid, which is encouraging, unlike some of my other investigations. I also like that the studies were normally designed to include people that have trouble sleeping, so the applicability to the real world is high. In one study, participants consumed glycine or placebo, and if we pop open the data, we see the results on a subjective fatigue on the left and a sleep scale on the right. Better results are a decrease in the left graph and an increase in the right graph. The individual lines are the individual participant results. So the same participants were given glycine and placebo. This is known as a crossover design study. The key value is the statistical test. And if the number falls below 0.05, it is statistically significant, indicating a likely effect. So, in short, fatigue was reduced with glycine and sleep scale score improved as well. You'll probably notice that some lines on the left graph, for example, increase instead of going down. This is a perfect illustration of why science speaks to averages. 
but there are almost always outliers, people who um, buck the trend and experience counterintuitive results, although the majority follow the same improvement trend. Okay, glycine seems to improve subjective feelings of fatigue, and that's actually confirmed in this study as well. However, we're looking at subjective measures. What about actual sleep? This is a fascinating datum coming from this study. Here, we're looking at the sleep architecture over a relative amount of time. Each block corresponds to a different stage of sleep, so REM is rapid eye movement sleep, and is the point at which most dreams occur. The four stages are all the part of the non-REM or deep sleep. Interestingly, it seems glycine might reduce some stages of deep sleep slightly and increase REM sleep. It doesn't seem that the effects are massive, just some very slight shifts, but still interesting nonetheless. Now, before we make any judgments on what that means, Glycine also seems to help in reducing the difficulty to falling asleep, which is a huge issue. We see that here. The time to falling asleep is about cut in half, which is a great effect. On the other hand, how long a person is asleep when in bed also improved, although less dramatically seen here. About a you know, 7 to 8% improvement. Consistent with other studies, this study also showed reduced feelings of tiredness, indicating glycine might lead to more restful sleep, regardless of the sleep architecture. There's some solid evidence here, but there's some things that I'd like to point out, including the protocol used in these studies. I'll cover that next. By the way, if you'd like to know how to analyze the studies like I do here, I have a short course that walks you through it step by step, uh, including how to apply it to your life, physician permitting. It's called the Health Autonomy Course. It'll teach you how to discard poor studies, save your money on supplements, and to offer you health autonomy, independence. If you're interested, it's uh, linked in the description box. Okay, my plug out of the way. The protocol used in most of these studies was pretty simple. Glycine does seem to be timed. So most studies had people consume it about one hour before sleep. The dose was three grams, most typically. I don't think slightly more would hurt, but I also can't say, based on the evidence, if it would actually help more either. I'd also like to note that I don't think that glycine is a cure-all. It seems to help, but the effect is very small in certain measures and a bit more impressive in others. So until we have more than four studies here, it's tough to tell the exact effect size, even if the effect is there. Also, all of these studies, at least the human ones, were industry-funded or linked to industry. If that impacts your impression of the results, but if this is the kind of work that you like to see, check out this next video of mine. It's similar, and I'll speak with you over there. Bye.